D&D Dungeon Masters of Reddit. What is the most useless magical item you've ever given your party? And how did they use it? In my last campaign, my player got a hammer that shoots confetti and makes a party blower sound on crits. A dramatic moment happened where he had to put his pet owlbear down as it was morphing into a monstrosity because of the BBEG. Because the creature was on the ground morphing, he auto crit. The beast lies there, writhing in pain, trying to hold on to its own self for as long as possible. You lift your hammer solemnly in the air, feeling the weight of not only the weapon, but the situation. As you bring it down, you feel the flesh give as the skull has been pulverized from the transformation. The sound of teeth clacks against the ground, echoing in the room around you. The party looks at the ground, and a moment of silence consumes you all. I gave one of my players a delicious magical sandwich that regenerated itself each day as long as you didn't eat the crust. It didn't offer any benefits when you ate it, it was just an infinite sandwich. That sandwich became a character in and of itself. The amount of time that was spent talking about the sandwich, its contents, the flavor, etc. was crazy. Every player described how their character would ogle the sandwich whenever it was brought out. That character is gone for now, but she kept that sandwich right up until retirement. She spends her time in Candlekeep Library, devouring knowledge and also the sandwich. Ring of Fire Detection Range Touch I used to love making magical items that were off the wall. I felt like the game's items didn't reflect the silly stuff someone would make if they had the time and manic attention to detail. There's a devil called a chitin. It's a chain-wrapped, chain-swinging, freaky, pain-loving Hellraiser type. My party fought one in a dungeon. He's wearing a unique amulet that makes chain. You place a piece of chain on the surface, and the amulet starts slowly, magically, generating a chain of the same dimensions. It only makes 10 feet a day, but over time you could make a few gold selling mundane chain. I just thought it was thematic and interesting. The party left the dungeon, went to town, found a smith, and poured their entire life savings into making two links of solid gold chain that would make Flava Flav weep. And I wept. What a fool I was. They found a wand that creates a random and unique lock that incorporates itself into the substance it's used on. So it might make a suspicious recess in a stone wall or a brass-plated keyhole on a wooden door. If probed with lockpicks, you would encounter moving tumblers or some other appropriate but unique locking mechanism. The lock was still completely non-functional though. It didn't magically create a compartment, it just made a lock. Even if you used it on a desk drawer, it never made a latch or bolt. So the drawer would open perfectly fine, while having a useless metal cylinder with tumblers that weren't connected to anything. If you successfully picked the lock, it always felt like a real lock despite lacking the physical pieces, it would make a soft chiming noise, and the lock would evaporate. The wand was a training tool used by a famous locksmith to challenge himself and his students. It had no practical application at all outside of that profession. It ended up being used by the druid, who had ranks in use magic device, don't ask, to constantly mess with the rogue. The druid would take every opportunity to wild shape into a small critter, good for scouting, and then place fake locks anywhere the rogue might conceivably try to use the search skill. The rogue's increasing paranoia, whenever he found a lock, and his overblown promises of vengeance every time a random hole in a floorboard wasted a minute of his time and chimed at him, was a pretty good gag. It turned a little sour when the druid made an extra lock on an honest-to-goodness treasure chest. The rogue rolled a natural 20 to pick the first lock and got a chiming noise. Then he rolled a 3 and triggered an energy draining trap that permanently lost him 5 HP. After that, the rogue stole every wand the druid had in the middle of the night and threw them all into a bottomless pit in the Underdark. I had a magical red rubber duck. Gave it to the party as a joke item because they kept asking for weird stuff. Not one of them chose to identify it. It was an artifact level rubber duck. Once it was part of your inventory, 
it would never leave unless it wanted to. It had wisdom and intelligence of 28, sentience, and could be attuned. Nobody learned that it was probably the most powerful item in my game. In the first campaign I played, the party began their journey by finding an orc woman in a tavern whose baby was stolen, and what she found in its place was a knife with a weird symbol on the handle. She sent us with the knife in search of the baby. We spent hours and hours in session after session, never using the knife in combat. We then found out that the knife would turn anyone it cut into a lizard. My character ate peanut butter off that knife more than once before finding this out. My infamous Horn of Resounding Quacks was a hit, summoned any duck within a half mile radius of the person using it. The party never went hungry after that. Edit. For clarification, it was indeed a call to any and all ducks within the half mile radius. But it wasn't a matter of instant teleportation. The ducks have to travel but do so willingly, answering the call of the horn. Not me as a DM, but early in 3E days, my friend's older brother was DMing a game for my friends, my sister, and me. One of the items we got was rolled on the random table was a gust of wind fan. It was exactly what it sounds like. Wave it, creates a powerful enough gust of wind to propel a boat and possibly rips itself to tatters. Threw it in the pack and forgot about it. A few sessions later, we're defending a town from waves of invaders. The final boss is a cyclops, or netin or something. Big bruiser. We see it approaching, with enough time to prepare for its arrival. My sister asks us all to use our healing potions, then give her the glass vials, which we do. Then she turns to the DM and calmly explains how she takes the vials with her up a guard tower. She smashes and grinds them up, waits for an opportune time, then uses the fan to blow a gust of powdered glass particles into the Eden's eyes. The look on this man's face. A cross between, holy, that's awesome, I'm so happy a story like this is in my campaign world now, and this boss was supposed to be difficult. In a game I am in currently, our DM gave us a flask of endless water. It can produce water in a trickle, a flood, or deluge that shoots 30 gallons of water in one turn. Our cleric has just fallen from a bridge over a chasm, and through clever bullcrapping our sorcerer has managed to catch the fallen cleric with a web spell. As we are all racking our brains to figure out a way to save them, our cleric pulls out the flask and uses the water cannon mode to propel herself back onto the bridge using the web strands as a fulcrum. Once my party got a huge beautiful magic sword, which was improperly identified as a sword of ogre slaying. Instead, it was a cursed sword of ogre saying. Whoever wielded it would only be able to yell, OGRE! at things. Several adventures later, they were attempting to catch a thief who was evading them. They came up with the brilliant idea of setting the sword as banged, and just going about their business. Sure enough, sometime later they heard, OGRE OGRE OGRE! ring out through the town, and they caught him without consequence. Once gave my party a magic spoon. It emitted a terrible aura of dark illusion magic, and merely holding it filled players with a sense of dread from its sheer chaotic energy. Its in-game abilities? It worked like a fork instead of a spoon. Not while I was DMing, but my favorite useless magic item to this day is the Boots of Quick Step. Once per turn, you may click your heels as an action, to gain an action. It resulted in my character beginning each of his turns clicking his heels. It was marvelous was playing a campaign on a tropical island type of place, and an enemy knocked my weapon off a cliff. So I used a coconut as an improvised weapon, crit with that thing four times in a row, and decided to keep it for last hitting people. Was a barbarian, and the DM liked the coconut last hitting so much, he had me keep track of the kills, and I eventually had a plus three coconut that on a crit would ricochet until it didn't kill something. So basically, he gave me a coconut of great potential. Not the DM, but the guy who used the item. I got a corncob pipe that made bubbles. Seriously, that's it. Just bubbles. They didn't put people to sleep. They didn't explode under flames. Nothing. 
Maybe it would make someone's eyes burn if they rubbed it in. We were assaulting a town, and I was part of the crew taking the gatehouse. We barred the windows and doors, and I put the pipe under the edge of the door, and blew, like I was inflating my own life raft in the ocean. Soon bubbles were pouring out at the seams, and the guards inside were panicking hardcore. One of them tripped on something and hurt himself on his own weapon. Once we opened the door, they came stumbling out, and we cut them down while they were disoriented and distracted. Shortly thereafter, I traded the stupid pipe for various types of arrows at a Fletcher. A few wads and ends, a can of dehydrated water, just an empty can, a wand of kindling, just a stick to burn, a scroll of raised dead that makes a dead body float six inches off the ground, ring of invisibility that turns only the ring invisible on use. I gave one of the characters a magical cloak that billows on command, even if there's no wind. He used it to make dramatic entrances. We were playing a campaign with custom items we all put in, they were reasonable, and someone put in a staff that, whenever someone used it, it turned the user into a potato. They could still move and turn themselves back, but that was about it. So we were in a dungeon that was rather small, our six-foot barbarian was angry that he had a debuff, but there was a small slit in the wall that I hid an item behind, and our magic man went poof, and rolled into the slit and got a key for a chest at the end of the dungeon. So, yeah. At some point in a homebrew game, the party gets their hands on a wand of magic farts. Point and fart, literally. They used it to sneak around quite effectively for a while. Then they had to deal with a cult with a secret mountain hideout. Travel through a cave system until they reach the antechamber with four lit braziers around the altar. My friend, a wizard, uses the wand until he rolls a one. The wand then springs a leak, spraying methane and slowly filling the chamber. Everyone bolts out as the wizard runs around the room before chucking the wand at the altar and following suit. They get out, just in time to seal the entrance and blow off the top of the mountain, literally. They were blinded and deafened for three turns each. The quill of penmanship and literacy allowed any creature to write their thoughts down in perfectly legible common. A rogue in the party was obsessed with capturing different creatures and monsters to learn their thoughts, only to find that most animals just wrote onomatopoeia versions of normal animal sounds like rawr or quack. The party was sick of it, and in a later adventure, agreed to trade the quill to a half-orc bodyguard in exchange for information to ambush one of the campaign's villains. The half-orc would become a Thomas Paine-like thought leader, and his first two books were dedicated to the party. When one of my players found a magic ring in the wreckage of a burnt wagon, he provisionally identified it as a ring of invulnerability. He spends most of the rest of the session swanning about like he's invincible until he's confronted by a veritable army of goblins. Combat immediately ensues, and to his surprise, he is quickly felled by javelins and scimitars. As he lays there bleeding out in the dirt, he notices that the ring is completely undamaged. <laughs>